got to figure out how to get these two outside of the five boroughs because they're doing a handful of shows. I mean, I th- they're doing like Connecticut. They're doing they're, they're like outside the five boroughs. But I got to find a way to get the Dream Eaters to come and do a show here. I got to figure that out. Have them do this live on the program. Maybe in the Duncan Lounge, right? That'd be right. Hey. Yeah. Alan Cox Show presents that. the Dream Eaters. Yeah. Let's do it. Nothing would make me happier. Hey, your Cleveland Guardians are playing tonight. It is the first of the last five games of the regular season. First of two tonight against the Cincinnati Reds. Their football team stinks. Baseball team uh, is better. 640 tonight at Progressive Field. And then tomorrow night. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Guardians will host the Astros of Houston, Texas. And then we'll get into the, um, the postseason there. Guardians can clinch home field advantage if they beat the uh, Reds tonight or if the Houston Astros lose in their game against the Seattle Mariners. So there's a lot that can happen and a lot that will happen. Uh, Thursday night is the last Oakland A's game in Oakland. And there's a local sports anchor who took the opportunity to kind of go off on John Fisher who is the owner of the Oakland A's. This is the guy who, um, you know, another one of these uh, rich dudes that basically fell into his family's wealth. I think his father was one of the guys that founded The Gap. And so John Fisher is a rich kid. And the A's leaving Oakland, but not going directly to Vegas. They're going to play in Sacramento for three seasons. They're going to be playing in a minor league ballpark in Sacramento because Vegas isn't ready for them. So this upcoming series against the Texas Rangers will be the very last A's games played there in Oakland, and of course they're all sold out. But Channel 7 uh, anchor Larry Bile wanted the owners to know just what he thought. So you heard Fisher's statement. Let me tell you what reality is, okay? John, you tried five different, extremely flawed stadium proposals. You never got even close to a shovel in the ground. Yes, Oakland politics is often a mess. I will give you that. But John, you surround yourself with incompetent yes men. And because you were born into a billionaire family, apparently never learned you have to spend money to make money. See Joe Lacob and the Golden State Warriors, your buddy who still wants to buy the team. John, you're a serial penny pincher. You've destroyed your family's great name and legacy because of your cheapness. As for the statement about loyal A's fans, quote, I wish I could speak to each and every one of you individually, end quote. Seriously? John, we've been trying to interview you for years, but you always choose to remain invisible unless you're begging politicians for public funding. And then you're out in front in Las Vegas. Anybody that says there's no fan base or there's no money in Oakland, that's total nonsense. I can go call three billionaires right now that would buy the team, okay? Why didn't he get to the, why didn't he call those billionaires a couple years ago? Mm -hmm. Hello, billionaires? Hi, it's Larry Bile over at ABC7. Would you like to buy the Oakland Athletics? So, yeah, um, John Fisher put out this big statement. That's what precipitated this uh, rant by this guy. And uh, he said that, uh, hey, listen, we were always trying to keep the team in the Bay Area, blah, blah, blah. Oakland A's started as a team in Philly, I believe, and they played somewhere else before they ended up out in California, but they've been in Oakland for a hundred and something. They've been in Oakland for over a hundred years. They won the World Series four times. They won six pennants and 17 division titles. And, uh, I mean, who were the greatest Oakland A's of all time? Ricky Henderson? Yep. Ricky Henderson. You had Mark McGuire there. You had, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what's his face, Uh, Jose Canseco. There you go. Raleigh Fingers played for the A's, right? I think I had a Raleigh Fingers A's card. And, um, yeah, so they're going away. Of course, immortalized. Zombie in, Brothers played there. Yep, the movie Moneyball. Yeah. 
Billy Bean. So uh, they are getting ready to leave. And it's not like people in Sacramento are going to care, really. So they're leaving Oakland. And uh, if there's any justice, Oakland will get another baseball team. But uh, we'll see what happens there. Alan, you were talking about that Mark Robinson guy. Did you see the other dude? Did you see the other dude on the gay porn site? I heard about that. No, I didn't. No, I didn't see him on the porn site. If that's what, you're, if that's what you're asking, there was a dude who I had never heard of before, but now his name is all over the place because, again, he's one of these dudes where it's all projection. It's these guys who are like, I'm concerned about kids and groomers and blah, blah, blah. An anti-gay activist. Always fun words to have attached to your CV. Anti-gay activist. A guy named Corey DeAngelis, who if you go to any of his pages now, like LinkedIn or Fox News, all scrubbed. This is a guy that was an advocate for some right-wing organization called the American Federation for Children. And they determined that some time ago, um, he had been a gay porn actor under a different name. He performed under the name Seth Rose uh, in gay porn videos. Where there's nothing wrong with that in and of itself. But then you can't be this guy who's like out there going, this is terrible and gay people are ruining everything and kids need this. And Now, I don't know. This is where Pound Cake would really come in handy because I don't know a lot of the terminology. Uh, on this website, he described himself. Dookie shoot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, spelled S-H-O-O-T, probably. Uh, he's described as a hot otter. O-T-T-E-R. A hot otter. And uh, he was the star of a masturbation contest video. He won. He's like Costanza. An otter is a slender, hairy member of the bear community. All right. Well, there you go. Then he's a a, passive personality. Yeah, he's a hot otter. (laughs) I mean, he's kind of got this like smooth, dumb Jared Kushner looking face. He's that's what he looks like. And so they dug this up. And again, this is this is all opposition research, right? This is all they're just digging up all this stuff on all these people and and they should because I mean these are people who are trying to hide these things and it's hypocritical of them uh, to advocate for what they're advocating for. Trying to distract people from what they're really dealing with. Uh so he was um in a uh video called Jerk Off Race. Hmm. <laughs> To see who could uh, finish the fastest, and he won. I mean, that's fun. I get he won. If you're competitive at all, irrespective of what you're competing in, you want to come out on top. You want the best, yeah. <laughs> as yeah. it were, yeah. He wrote a book uh, last year called "The Parent Revolution: Rescuing Your Kids from the Radicals Ruining Our Schools." Yawn. A book endorsed by. Say it with me. Donald Trump. Uh, so, yeah, uh, this guy is all over Fox News. Young guy. He's probably, I don't know how old he is, but, I mean, he looks like maybe mid-30s. But um, uh, vehemently anti-LGBTQ, right? That's what's ruining children. It's left-wing propaganda, blah, blah, blah. And uh, he was a, a gay porn actor. And so uh, he he's basically been scrubbed from the website of the organization that he worked for, and I doubt they're going to have him on Fox News. Now, I think the good news in this, the silver lining is, you start living your life again, and you go back to what you know, and you put Corey DeAngelis to bed, and you resurrect Seth Rose, and you go back into the uh, gay porn community. Because you've got a story to tell. I was not they living. <laughs> I was not living uh, my real life. I was not living my truth, and now I am. 
It is wild to see. They used to call them log cabin Republicans. I don't know what they call them anymore. Maybe they still do, but gay Republicans. Um, except that's kind of when that party was um, more center. Now it's it's so crazy that it's wild to see gay Republicans who are still trying to fit into the party and other people just slagging them. It's like, I don't know what you guys thought was ever going to come from this, but you see a lot of that now. Because it used to be, hey, we want our party to be a big tent and um, there's room for everyone, that whole thing. It ain't like that anymore. But there are still a lot of gay Republicans who are trying to fly the flag and they are just getting put down, boy. So maybe the silver lining in this situation is that he will get back to living his best life. And he won't have to fake all this nonsense anymore. Catfish Hunter played for the A's. Remember Catfish Hunter? No. Now, the reason that that name was so great is because the guy never once went fishing. Whoa. Mm -hmm. He just hunted them. Well, (laughs) yes. They played in Kansas City before they moved to Oakland. Thank you. Devotion to accuracy. I thought they went from Philly to Oakland. Kansas City. They've been in Oakland since 1968. All right. Well, there is that. Uh, They're also trying to get people, uh, if you ever buy uh, animals or uh, go to Petco, um, and I don't understand the distinction here. There's something called rabbit dump season. I guess this is well known in the uh, pet community that kids would want rabbits as pets. Rabbits are the third most popular pet behind dogs and cats. But there's been a big uh, PETA push to get Petco to stop selling them and instead have people adopt them because people don't realize how much work it is to take care of a rabbit. Dude, they stink. I re- that's the least of your problems. They do Rabbits stink. stink. They do stink. They do stink. Yeah. I mean, I remember in college, a good friend of mine, she had a rabbit. She had Murray the rabbit. It was a big old thing. And she, it was more of an affectation than anything else, but I think it was kind of an early iteration maybe of a, um, of a emotional support animal, but she was carrying Murray in her bag all the time and blah, blah, blah. But I don't understand the difference between selling them and having people adopt them. Uh, they're calling out Petco saying that, um, you know, they said they were going to stop selling them and they've betrayed everybody and blah, blah, blah. And the rabbit dump season is when people go, oh, this is a lot of work. And then they just, you know, take the rabbit for a drive and let it into the woods or whatever. And so then it either becomes roadkill or something else gets it. I don't understand the difference between buying an animal and adopting the animal. They're like, know. oh, we're going to put... there's more paperwork involved? I guess, but how's that going to... St- if you want one, you're just going to stand there filling out paperwork. We want to encourage responsible rabbit adoptions rather than sales. I don't get what the difference is. It's got to be something with like... I, I honestly have. I don't like, know I either. Can't come up with anything. I know you're I still know. taking ownership of an animal and taking it home. I don't are, know. Are you taking maybe it home, like a, or are you just paying for it to be taken care of by somebody else? Well, it's maybe it's not a, like a resale thing. Yeah. Like once you adopt an animal, you can't resell it or return it. Can you return if you bought it? If you're just buying it like a bag of cat food, can you return it? <laughs> hey, can I? This is like a, I have a, uh, a I have a, a rabbit in this bag of cat food. Can I return this? Because I don't think once you adopt a pet, I don't think you can return it to where you adopted it from. I don't. I have no idea. I've never. Okay, my so cat let me, costs thirty five dollars. Yeah, I'm going to their thing here. Dogs near you. I don't see rabbits. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah. Okay. Oh, maybe then rather than maybe rather than buying it, you have to go through like this says a process interview, meet the pet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a little bit more. Uh, there's a little bit more of a screening. More laborious. Yeah, yeah. Rather than just grabbing it out of a, a tank and saying, I want this. 
Okay, so this says, this is from the Humane Society. Just like dogs in puppy mills, rabbits are often kept in deplorable conditions when they're bred for pet stores to sell. Okay. So instead of buying a bunny, why not adopt? Oh, adopt it before like it goes an, to the pet store. Yes, from like an I animal see. shelter or a rescue uh, or something like that. Right. Well, that makes sense, but the article is about how Petco is going to be doing adoptions. And I'm like, well, okay. So they're saying, hey, try to get it earlier in the process. Adopt, don't shop for rabbits. Hmm. Hey, Joe. Yes. Hey, Alan, did you know that uh, you were talking about uh, PETA? Did you see that PETA is now sponsored or endorsed uh, Donald Trump? Uh, it stands for People Eating Tasty Animals. <laughs> All right, well done, Joe. There you go. Joe. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, listen. Nothing wrong with an old street joke. People eating tasty animals. Hey, if God hadn't wanted us to eat animals, he wouldn't have made them out of meat. The APL. Yeah, I've heard of Adopt Not Shop. I, I'm like, but when it comes to the store itself, I get going to a place to adopt an animal. You go to the APL or something like that. But when Petco says, okay, we're not going to sell them, we're going to adopt. That's what I understand. When you're at the retail level, what is the difference? Because that was the whole point of the article. PETA was, was really coming down on Petco. And they finally said, okay, well, we'll. So at that stage, I get going to a breeder been doing it before it gets into a never heard of a bunny mill i mean it makes sense i mean out here isn't that what the, the isn't the dick goddard law something along those lines didn't he didn't they have some legislation with his name on it that has to do with pet adoptions i don't know i don't remember i thought that's what it was that maybe had, i just don't because he was so closely associated with uh animals or woolly bears, whatever the hell that I don't know what a woolly well, was, bear is. It's like a little it's a caterpillar. Bug. Yeah, it's a caterpillar. Yeah. He wanted like people to adopt caterpillars. No, that was he would do the woolly bear festival. It was a little thing that he was a part of. But he was. He had very, a caterpillar festival. He was. Uh, I don't know uh, if it's actually a caterpillar, but about uh, pet ab- adoption and taking care of pets. Yeah, well, it's a good thing to be for. Yeah, woolly bears, caterpillar. <laughs> All right, so They're cute, though. No, listen, I get it. I didn't know that that's what everybody was referring to. I thought it was a, I thought it was a giant beast, Mary, that was indigenous to Northeast Ohio. Oh, just a little caterpillar. And he, <laughs> black and, <laughs> and orange he, caterpillar. He was trying to get people to not shoot them on sight. All right, I got to take a break. He wanted the last word in. Uh, shoot me a text. Are you gone, Mary? No, I'll be here. Oh, I'll stick around today. Three five one nine two to text, and we'll be back. The Alan Clark Show. Everywhere on our free.